Hey guys, Eric at SoCal Cigars. Hope you're having an amazing day. I wanted to go over a topic that I know is confusing and frustrating for some people. It's, it's when you hear people talk about the notes and flavors and aromas that they're getting out of a cigar, and then you smoke your cigar and are kind of wondering, well, where the hell are all these notes? I'm not getting all these notes. What are you talking about? You're tasting these five or six different things, and I may be tasting one or two if I'm lucky. So, Part of that comes with this experience of, of developing and establishing your palate. Um, so that's part of that. Um, that'll just come over time. But there actually is a technique that you can start to incorporate in your cigar smoking that will help you to get um, to the level of, of feeling and tasting and smelling these notes and aromas. Um, so anyway, let's start. I want to start by lighting up a cigar. I hope you guys don't mind. My son got me these. A while ago and he has been complaining over and over that I have not smoked them yet but I have been waiting to smoke these to let them sit in my humidor for actually a couple years now so I'm going to light one of these little bad boys up we'll see how this tastes I've been looking forward to this for a while let's cut it and let's toast it Mm. Oh, that's good. Well, to my son Kevin, good choice. This is a good stick. I'll put the link down below of what, what I'm smoking here. Anyway, I wanted to make sure I had this because part of what we're going to talk about today is is what we call retrohaling. And that's a technique that you can employ that you can begin to start to taste some of these notes and aromas that people are talking about. So first let's go over some basics and I've actually taken a few notes so I'm going to look down a little bit and hopefully you don't find that too rude. Anyway, some of the things that will affect the the way a cigar tastes are going to be things like its shape, you know, the strength of the cigar, the blend of the, the tobacco. I mean these are obviously you know basics that clearly are going to affect the taste of the cigar and what the cigar is going to impart to you. But unless you're able to either develop your palate or employ a technique that helps you to capture some of those notes and, and subtleties that are being blended into these cigar recipes, because that's really what they are. I mean, think about these are really just recipes like you would make bread or you would make anything. You've, they follow a recipe to give a certain taste, a certain flavor. They're rolling it a certain shape so that it, it smokes a certain length of time. It smokes in a certain manner. So, so that's another thing I want you to think about. When you're talking, for example, a ring gauge of a cigar, okay, the thinner, like this one, the thinner a cigar is, the more equal the blend of smoke and air is going to be. When you're smoking a really fat cigar, like let's say a 60 gauge like Gordo or bigger, I mean they have up to 80 gauge, it's ridiculous, but they have them, you're getting a, a lot more air than you're getting smoke. So that's going to thin that taste out the, and the 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 amount of flavors you're going to get is going to be a little bit diluted because there's so much more air. So you're going to more than likely find you're going to get a lot more flavors out of a thinner cigar. So that's just something to think about as well. Um, you know, I looked this up because it was kind of interesting. So your nose, when they talk about what your nose can, can detect, they talk about it in aromas. And they're saying that our nose can actually detect, the human nose can detect up to 10,000 different aromas. But, think about where, what we're doing with a cigar. We're really just taking it into our mouth, okay? Your mouth can only detect, in essence, four different uh, flavors. Or, I don't know if it's flavors or types of, types of tastes. So, it's basically, it can taste acid, it can taste bitter, it can taste salty, and it can taste sweet. That's it. There's really four. So, <clears throat> you got to think, if you're only taking cigar smoke into your mouth you're limited to basically the four senses that our taste buds on our tongue are going to pick up. When you're talking about your nose, you're talking about 10,000 different aromas, okay? So if you can find a way to blend the two together, which is what retrohaling is, you're going to start to pick up more aromas from the cigar than you're just getting taste in your taste buds, which are limited to four, right? Makes sense? Simple science, right? Um, so 
just so you know what you might be looking for, I wanted to, and again, that's why I wrote it down, that's why I'm going to look down, because I want to make sure I'm giving you guys accurate data. So, what the experts have determined in the cigar world are that there's, these are the notes you can get from a cigar, from what they say. Herbs, spices, earth, fruits, nuts, and others, okay? So, just to give you a little rundown. Herbs, they're talking about things like wood, grass, tea, things like that. Spices, they're looking at things like pepper, anise, um, and clove. Not, not limited to, but these are the, the top ones. Um, when they're talking about the earth notes, you're looking at things like um, coffee, cream, honey. Um, fruit, you're looking at citrus, cherry, raisins, things like that. Nuts, you're looking at almonds, uh, walnuts. Uh, they even talked about marci marcipan, which is like an almond paste. Um, and then other category, they're looking at things like leather, musk, and smoky flavors that you can impart to a um, to a cig cigar. Um, so anyway, those are those are, you know, that's that's a pretty wide range of things that you can get out of a cigar if you know how to do it. Okay, so let's get into that. What are the mechanics of actually retrohaling or at least beginning that process? So if any of you ever used to smoke cigarettes, um, you're probably familiar with people that will inhale it and then what they call French inhale. They'll inhale it in their mouth, they'll let it go out of their mouth, suck it into their nose and then blow it back out. That's, in a way, that's sort of what we're doing but not blowing it out of our mouths. We're basically taking a mouthful of cigar smoke. We're then, instead of just blowing all of it out, we're actually going to open the top of your sinus cavities, which you can, you'll get used to. It, this takes a while. This is not something you can do first try. You've got to build up to doing this. But you can let, and they, they estimate maybe no more than about 20-25% of that smoke to go through your sinuses. So by doing that, where you've got 75% of the smoke hitting your mouth, which is only picking up those four different flavor categories, but now you're bringing 20, 25% of the smoke through your sinuses, which is basically your nose. Um, now you're adding in 10,000 aromas, okay? So that's why when people are saying, I'm picking up wood and cedar and I can taste cherries and I can, that's what they're talking about. It's because they're, they're either purposely retrohaling or they're inadvertently over time by building their palate are letting smoke go through their sinuses rather than just in and out of your mouth, okay? So, how I would normally smoke a cigar in, in the beginning, because I don't really want to get you sick and I don't want you to try to do something you're not comfortable with in the beginning, especially if you're not like already a pipe or a cigar or a cigarette smoker, you, this is gonna be new to you. Um, so I would literally just tell you, take it in your mouth and let the smoke sit out a second and then just blow it back out, right? Okay, that's pretty much all you're really doing. But when you're retrohaling, I don't know if, how well this is gonna show up on camera, but I'm gonna try to let most of the smoke come out of my mouth, but I'm gonna let some of it go through my sinuses and come out of my nose. Yeah, I don't think you can see it. I was looking at the camera to see if I could see it. I'm not sure you can, but I will tell you, without a doubt, that the the taste I'm getting from this cigar, letting it go in my mouth and out, is far less complex than the taste I'm getting as it's going through my sinuses. Now let me see if I can pick any of that up. Okay, so with me just basically smoking this with only going through my mouth and not retrohaling, what I'm getting out of this is really not very complex. It's a little bit spicy. Um, it's kind of a rich taste, uh, but I'm, I'm not getting a lot beyond just a rich tasting tobacco and a little bit of pepper or a little bit of spice. But let me see if I can, if I retrohale and see if I pull out anything other than just that. I am. That's amazing when you consciously are doing it. So on top of that now, instead of just getting that kind of flavorful tobacco and that spice, there I tasted a very strong, um, almost tasted like wood, like oak. 
And I'm telling you, that did not come through when I was just inhaling it in my mouth. I was not getting that kind of oaky taste. Let me try again. Interesting. So that time, not only I, not only did I taste a little bit of oak, I almost it almost tasted like a little bit nutty too. I'm telling you, it is so, and I'm not blowing smoke up your butt. This is dead truth. You know my videos. I don't pull punches. This is I always just say the truth, good or bad or ugly. Just breathing this into my mouth, I'm literally tasting a, a, a rich tobacco flavor and a little bit of spice. But when I start adding in a little bit of retrohaling, that went from two to four. Easily adding in kind of a woody oak flavor and a nutty, kind of a nutty flavor. Almost like if I had to figure out what that was, let me try. almost walnutty. Yeah, it almost tastes like, like kind of like walnut. I'm telling you, I'm just this is just straight just straight shot. <laughs> I mean just showing you what it's all about. Um anyway, so I think that's pretty interesting. I think that uh it's pretty awesome that you can take a cigar and and feel like hey, yeah, it's pretty simple non-complex cigar. You simply add the technique of a little bit of retrohaling and all of a sudden you're opening that cigar up, at least for me, to twice of what it was before. I literally went from tasting two things to tasting four things. And so, and here's another big deal about cigars, is that, that as they burn, okay, the flavor notes are gonna change. The aromas that you can pick up are going to change. That's why they talk about things like, like you gotta wait and see how your cigar is gonna develop because it's gonna taste one way in the very beginning and, it, and it, you got to think, as you're smoking a cigar, you're drawing smoke through it, one, right? You're drawing heat through it. Okay, so as you're heating up the tobacco, it's changing its flavor characters and profile. Okay, so that's why they always, like a lot of times if you see people doing cigar reviews, they'll always say, they're going to give you their initial thought, right? They're going to give you like the mid-stick review and maybe they'll wrap it up, right? Or sometimes they'll actually break it into four parts, right? Why they're doing that is because they're letting you know how this cigar is developing. Because if I just, I mean, think about it. If I just hit the cigar in the beginning, never retrohaled, and just gave you a review on that much of the cigar, I would have said it's kind of a rich tobacco and a little, little peppery. That's it. You would never have known until I retro hit it. You would never have known about those other two notes that I discovered by letting it go through my sinuses and get picking up some aromas that I wouldn't have got before. And this isn't a cigar review. This is just a really more about retrohaling and letting you understand how you can start developing uh, your palate and starting to get more flavors out of these cigars, um, which is what you're paying for. I mean, get what you can out of these cigars, right? Um, you know, I'll, re I'll review cigars at another time. I'm going to you know, hold out to do reviews on very specific cigars that I want to review. Maybe ones that are lesser known or ones that I really think are just fantastic. And this is so far good. I mean, again, thank you to my son for getting me these. Um, this is trained to a very nice smoke today. See now, as you start to develop that technique of retrohaling, it doesn't become something very conscious that you have to do. And I think that's why, I think learning how to retrohale, I think that's what people talk about a little bit when they talk about your palate is developing. Because I think you just start to automatically retrohale without even realizing it, to, to, to be honest with you. Because after a while, you're just doing that all the time. Uh, you gotta think, it's almost like eating, eating a food, and like it's like eating a piece of cake and you're only taking bites of the spongy cake part no mix it with the with the uh, frosting you know you want to get the whole round flavor of this like I said like a recipe for a cake the cake isn't meant to be eaten compartmentalized you know the chef isn't wanting you to eat the spongy part and then the filling part and then the frosting they're making this recipe and, and putting it together in a way that every bite you get has all three of those components at one time and that's how the flavor is supposed to taste that's sort of what's happening when, when cigar makers are making these blends. 
is they're they're putting these together so that you can get the full range of uh, of notes and aromas and flavors out of a cigar profile you know because again they're and we've never really talked about this but you know depending on how they age the leaf how they infuse the leaf how, which part of the, of the tobacco plant they're taking the leaf from what type of soil it grew in um, how long they let the the leaves stay on the plant before they pick them whether it's earlier or later i mean there's so many factors but again think about it what these what these cigar manufacturers are doing is they're putting together a recipe to give you a certain flavor and it's my opinion that if you're not able to retrohale and start to really pull out those notes you're only getting a part of what they're trying to, to put together for you and I think you're missing out so anyway I just wanted to throw this out there for you I think that retrohaling is a great technique I think it's gonna get you're gonna start getting more of your money's worth out of your cigars by doing it it doesn't take much to get used to it and after a while it just becomes second nature and you'll I promise you your your cigars are gonna taste better and better and better as you get used to doing that and start to to put that as part of your normal cigar smoking uh, part process anyway um, hope you enjoyed this I hope it was helpful for you I think you're gonna really um, what I'd really like to see is in the comments if, you, if what I'd love to see you guys do is take a cigar you've been smoking for years that you like and Implore, employ this um, retrohaling technique to that cigar if you haven't already and let me know if you tasted more out of that cigar than you did before because it'd be really cool to see one of your favorite sticks get opened up into a whole new part of uh, flavor town that you were never driving through before see what I'm saying anyway please like please subscribe hit that bell and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. It's Saturday here uh, when I'm doing this. Beautiful blue skies. It's just an awesome day. I hope you guys are having an awesome day too. Go grab a cigar. Start retrohaling that sucker and see if you can't pull more notes out of it than you ever thought possible. All right. I will see you on the next video.